What's up, everybody, and welcome to a new edition of Knicks and Six, Cam Smith, and I got my road dog with me, Monica McNutt. And Monica, we're talking about why the Knicks turned things around in that second half. Game two, it was nuts. And that's the New York Knicks team that we're all familiar with. Reason number one, Mo, of why the Knicks turned things around in the second half. Let me hear it. What you got? All right, I'm going to Reggie Bullock, our three and D guy in the pregame show on Wednesday night. I pointed him out as my X Factor, although he still had to feel it out in the first half. In the second half, I thought he was tremendous. He hit big time threes, finished with 15 points. But Cam, we can't talk about Reggie's performance without talking about the defense that he played on Trey Young in that second half. He made it hard for him. He took some fouls where he needed to. He used his length to disrupt him. And whether Trey credits it to fatigue or not, or the fact that the Knicks are a good team, either way, Reggie Bullock put them straps on. Shout out to Reggie Bullock because he definitely held it down on both ends of the floor. So my first reason, Mo, is going to be that man, Derrick Rose. Started in the second half. Tom Thibodeau was like, look, we need to get this game. We got to split the series before we go back down to Atlanta to continue games three and four. And D. Rose was D. Rose. 26 points. He had 17 in game one, averaging 21 for the season. And it was one of those things where you just watched him and you knew you were watching something great. So what he was able to do in terms of getting his baskets, but also setting up other players, he had four assists in game two, was something that Derrick Rose has been known to do throughout his basketball career, and that's get buckets and step up when the time calls for him to do it. All right, Mo, reason number two for you, what you got? All right, before I go there though, I just gotta say that I've always felt like Derrick Rose is sort of the X Factor in the overall series. You think about his experience and big time playoff games at the point guard spot. Not as no, you know, wing dude, catch and shoot, like role right. play, as the guy. And so I really think this team has benefited from having him with them. <laughs> the points in the paint. Yeah. I think in that third quarter run, you saw the Knicks start to be far more aggressive offensively. At a attack to the basket going down the left side of the paint from Julius sticks out in my mind. But when you look at it, this team outscored the Hawks in the paint 42 to 28. Whether it's Julius attacking, Derrick Rose getting in there with the floater, even Taj Gibson's six points that were very timely, they made an effort to find a way to exploit the mismatches, and that meant getting in the paint and finishing. Yeah, and that set them up right on the offensive end too, Mo, with them getting points in the paint. And it lets you know that this was not like the the the, the Knicks teams that you knew before in terms of what teams were coming in and, and, and defending or just kind of owning them. It wasn't that situation. This was a situation where the Knicks were physical. This was 90s Knicks basketball. And so you mentioned points in the paint. I want to talk about the rebounding because the Knicks own the glass. Their glass work was phenomenal. 54 to 41 when it came to rebounds. And that's what the Knicks did. And that's allowed them to one, get points in the paint, get second chance points. They had 13 offensive rebounds. And then they shut down Atlanta on the offensive end. It was one of those one and done situations. Atlanta shot 36% from the field and only 27% from three. So that lets me know that we're locking you up. We're getting the rebound, and we're going, and we're scoring in the lane and at the rim, Mo. So let's move it forward. Give me that third reason. All right, third reason, we got to talk about how excellent this bench has been throughout the entire series. Game one, 64 points. We know the result. Game two, 55 points. Outscoring the starters, 55 to 44. Now, that's a little bit skewed because technically Derrick Rose is legit the starter when you look at minutes. But um, in a bench role, he contributes to that 55 points. I just think when guys came in, even in the first half before this team went on the third quarter run, we saw some energy out of that bench unit, right? And then when we finally got together the pairings that made for the run, ultimately, it did include highlight moments from an Obi Toppin. It did include, you know, a floater or two from Emmanuel quickly. So I think the bench has been ready, and that gives me confidence because I still think this team has not played its best ball yet, and we're only at game two. Not at all. They haven't played their best ball, Mo. And the great thing about what the bench did in game two was it woke up Julius Randle, too. He had 15 and 12 and stepped up his game in the second half. Shout out to Julius winning that most improved award in the NBA. So I love that third reason, Mo. But I'm going to give one of the biggest reasons, even though it's the final one, but it's not last on the list. It's the Knicks 
fans, listen, MSG was levitating all night, especially in that second half when Derrick Rose got cooking. Reggie Bullock put the clamps on Trey Young, and he got his three ball working. So the 16,000 inside the garden was something that is going to be memorialized for a long time because that's why we need fans back in NBA arenas because you get those settings like we had in game two where the fans understand that, hey, we need to help carry our team and power our team to a win. And that's just putting everybody that's in Atlanta that's from New York City or has those New York roots. Let's turn the Hawks arena into MSG South. Let's do that for games three and four in Atlanta, all right? we You, you with that, Mo? You feel that? In the arena, the fans were crucial, Cam, but even after the game, the street in front of Madison Square Garden was packed. The city was on tilt. They were banging on the glasses. We were doing the post-game show. I couldn't focus. I didn't fake it. <laughs> they deserve it. First playoff win in eight years. Have it up, New York. There we go. You said it right there, Mo. The fans deserve it. It's been eight years, and they finally got that first playoff win. Shout out to the Knicks. Time the series up at one apiece as games three and four will now be in Atlanta. But it's new life. It's a new series. And New York, we here. That's it for Knicks in Six. For Monica McNutt, I'm Cam Smith. We appreciate you rocking with us.